Can I, can I ask, um, there's some certain allegations Hello. going Hello. around Hello. that uh, police, allegations. Al allegations going around from our community that the police are working with Hope Not Hate, which are provided as a far left organization that go with Antifa as well. And they're sending information, like at the, uh, there was a football lads uh, um, arena in Birmingham, yeah. and one witness saw uh, one Antifa shaking hands with a policeman, yeah. oh, that exchanging means nothing. information. That's yeah, not uncommon, that's yeah. not uncommon. <laughs> <laughs> if, we, if we if we are working with an organizer and we work with all sorts of organizers, it doesn't mean that we share their viewpoint. It okay. just means that we're working with them. I just want to make that clear because to have cooperation there's this notion, on the day and that there's this notion out there. I just wanna to, wanna to make sure whether the allegation that if the police are working with Antifa, I don't want I, I, I that would sound really fucking crazy to me. That, if that's really true. Yeah. The police are working with a much more sinister organisation called the government. Oh, yeah. What are you worried about yeah, working yeah. with Antifa? These guys are policing completely immoral laws and she will do what she's told. So this is where the protest earlier was. And now I'm gonna go have some conversations with some of the speakers and other attendees about how they feel, what the potential ramifications are, and updates on the Count Dankel situation. What are his next moves? Stay tuned. So the protest, it's, it's still going on, I believe, right? Yeah, it's still going on. Well, we've stepped away for a little bit and I wanted to talk to some people about how they felt and I want to officially state the, the verdict on what happened with Count Dankula in terms of his sentencing and his plans. So with me, we have, obviously, Mr. Sargon Avakad. Uh, Elise, I'm a writer for Milo. And uh, Sebastian, I'm the treasurer of Young Independence. <laughs> so you guys were all the protests too. I, you were speaking there. So first, what happened today with Count Dankula? Anybody wants to mention what happened? Count Dankula, uh, he was found guilty of, under the Communications Act, we all know about that. Um, he's been given a fine of £800 to pay. Still not good in terms of the precedent it sets for free speech. However, much better than him going to jail. So very relieved about that. And you just mentioned something really interesting. Yeah, I, um, I believe he's going to appeal. So he, he won't even pay the £800? No, I don't think he should even pay the £800 and I really hope he does. Um, because ultimately I want him to come out of this with them saying that he did nothing wrong because he didn't. Well that would, uh, if you guys are threatened by the precedent set by this, Absolutely. that's he would have to do that. He would have to Absolutely. refuse. Yeah. So what do you think, do you, if he appeals, mm -hmm. do you think he'll win? I mean he already he already lost, right? Well yeah, but he, he lost to a sort of provincial judge. It will go to a high court and it's oh, interesting. different, you know. And yeah. So hopefully, I think he's got a case. All right, well more importantly, I live streamed the protest and, the, and a lot of the speeches, but it's, you know, so I'll try and throw some of that footage in. But for the most part, I think we'll just talk about how you guys feel about what happened. Do you feel it was a success? Oh, uh, yeah. you were, you're an organizer. I mean, you're wearing the no, shirt. No, I'm, I'm not organizing. I, I oh, okay. No, just speak. a speaker. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right uh, on. The turnout yeah. was amazing. I mean, really, yeah. um, for the, the main stuff sort of happening in Scotland, I think, but the turnout was amazing. For a, um, for a Monday morning. Or Monday for a Monday morning. Yeah, exactly. amazing. I mean, turnout, if it was yeah. a Saturday, I'm, I mean, yeah. double, maybe triple. A lot of people are either unemployed or just slacking yeah. at work today. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I asked someone how many people they thought. They said maybe 600 mm. at its peak. Would that, does that sound? Well, I think, I think the best way to, to sort of put it into context is a lot of people would have thought of this as, you know, walking along the pavements from Leicester Square to Downing Street. It wasn't that. They had to close down one side of the road to get the, the, the channel of people there. So uh, there was yeah. clearly demand. Um, and, and I thought the turnout was amazing and the atmosphere was amazing too. I mean, people were really getting behind this people. <laughs> I saw many comments on my live stream, even from people who like what you're doing, saying this was cringy AF. Let them think that. Who yeah. cares what keyboard warriors think? Yeah. But, th but these are people who even agree with you. They were saying, one person said, and I found this interesting, that yes, this is very cringy, but keep in mind, these are people who don't normally come out and protest who are trying to make, you know, they're making a stand. Yeah. So although there's a negative opinion of it, there's sort of like a positive aspect to their thoughts. The only, the only way to enact any kind of change is to give a physical presence in the world, to let the people in charge know that there are hundreds of people who are literally going to come out and be cringe lords in public. There's no choice. Cringe so lords in public. Yeah, well, they, they have no, we've got no choice. You know, they can whinge about it from behind their keyboards all they want, but they're not going to change anything. So, what's, yeah, their, I mean, what, like what's the their whole, opinion matter? The whole Kekasadi flags, like, obviously, I'm not for that. But just, you know, actually 
Pers personally, because you know, um, on a personal level, like I'm friends with Count Dankula, so for me it was just you know showing support. Oh, yeah. If I could have gone to, to Scotland, I would have yeah. today, like if I could have. But you know, this is the second best thing. And yeah, if people want to be edgy and just like meme in real life, then let them do it. Let them, let them do it. It is cringe deal. when they do it. It is cringe. You know. Pakistani flags. <laughs> Yeah. You, oh, wait, 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 you think the Kakistani flags are cringy? Well, the, the point is to be a bit cringy. There's no getting around it, but like, you know, it, it doesn't matter. The, at the end of the day, the, what matters is that we are actually, we are in a position in the UK where we don't have free speech. And someone has to say something about it. I think I can speak for everybody who's over there and everyone here when I say I'm willing to be called cringy if I'm standing up for something that's important as freedom of speech and freedom of expression. Yeah. And freedom to make a joke. Yeah, yeah. So now let's, let's, oh, let's, actually, let's get... Uh, some pushback. The Kekasani flags are used often in the media to prove, I'm doing air quotes here, prove that these are actual Nazi, is it actual Nazi imagery? That these people are actually supporting or dog whistling to Nazis? Uh, I, I, I talked to you about this on stream, but yeah, do you wanna, how, how do you answer to like their use of the Kekasani flag as like no, a way Nazis to- Nazis generally don't like it when people mock them. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the Kekasani flag is a mockery of the Nazis. So uh, yeah, I, I would be, Amazed if the Nazis legitimately were in favor of it. Do you? I, I, I mean, I have seen people at far. I, I don't want to accuse everyone of being far right, but like some of these like nationalistic far right neo Nazi ish types of people. I, I'm, I'm saying it that way because I'm not trying to blanket everybody in Nazi. No, no, I'm trying I to avoid that, but they, it, they do have the symbols. And yeah, they, they want to co opt, I yeah. suppose, and turn into something that it's not when it's just it's a bit of memory. It's just a bit yeah. of it's a bit of shit posting. And they, really. they, they do this sort of thing because they, they, they know. That the left-wing media will will tar anything that they touch as being entirely to do with what they do, and they use this as a way of trying to normalise their views. But at the end of the day, it only works if you let the left-wing media control the narrative on it, and I'm not going to. So, so here's the next bit, though. Some of the things you said, I was talking to some people after the event, and they said, "Wow, what he said is going to be taken out of context for sure." I don't because you it. quoted some very, yeah. very like um, yeah. touchy subjects. Oh yeah. I it told you it'd be spicy. Yeah, it reinforces the, uh, the reasoning that context and intent matter. Because the thing is, I, I don't think anyone can take anything from that speech and suggest that what I said was racist. No, it wasn't. In fact, everything oh, you said after the, exactly yeah. everything that you said after your uh, quote, which was arguably the racist part, then you then refuted the whole thing. So exactly. But this, this is the thing, right? People are afraid to address the hard questions, right? One of the things that drives me crazy is the Jewish question. It's like, okay, what's the left-wing answer to why Jewish people are in high places in the media? Because if they don't have one, they're going to look like it might be a conspiracy, and this persuades people that you can't answer it. The answer is that Jewish people on average have a high verbal IQ. Where are people with high verbal IQ going to end up? Oh, in the media. Oh, what a surprise. You know, it's the same same reason Asians are high, like, uh, mathematical IQ. So, so they end up in technology. It's, yeah. it's the consequence of free society. It's not conspiracy or anything like that. I, I want to point out something that we were talking about earlier, and hopefully I can frame this properly, but someone was uh, having an argu argument with me about why they supported Richard Spencer. I made a comment about something Richard Spencer said when he, made, when he used a racial slur and was told he never said that. I pulled up on Google to Google search it because I've seen it so many times, I couldn't find it. And I'm sitting here scratching my head, but am I wrong? Did he not say these racial slurs? I, I must have made a mistake. And then I noticed on Google it said, some of these search results have been removed under European protection laws. So it's my assumption, but I can only assume that the reason I couldn't find these things, which I know to exist, are that in Europe, they've been removed. So, I don't know if I don't want to. I don't want to confirm that. I don't want to sit here and act like I know 100%. That's exactly what happened. But in terms of the context of supporting free speech, what this said to me was, I literally can't prove a point as to why I disagree with someone because they've potentially hidden the language. Not to mention the fact that just ostracizing someone because they've said one bad thing doesn't mean that they don't have something valuable to say. Even a wrong clock is right twice a day. Yeah. But I, not only that, like that, that means that the anti-racist laws are actually giving cover to Richard Spencer for things he said in the past. Because yeah. you can't now dig up something he said because that's racist. So let's, I want to make sure I absolutely clarify this. I have no way of knowing exactly what happened. But taking from this, um, from my potential assumption, which may or may not be true, but thinking about the future of hate speech laws, hate speech laws, if they do say these words need to be removed from the internet, 
you are sanitizing racists. You are sanitizing actual hateful individuals or, or things like that. One of the key things from the Count Dankula case that came out was that because the judge had stated that intent and context were irrelevant, the reporters who came who then said, but you said this, and then they said what he said, and he would rightfully shut them down this morning and said, so what you've just said there, without context and without intent, is worthy of the crime which I am being now committed. Well, one of the things I, I, I brought up before is that the Mirror, I believe, uh, so I, I apologize if I'm wrong about the outlets, but I believe it was the Mirror, the Sun, and the Daily Mail ran either a clip or the entirety of the Nazi pug video. And they've been up for two years yeah. without repercussion. Without, not only that, many outlets, including the Independent, used the exact same language in their articles. Yes. And so I have to wonder, I'm trying to figure out at what point Dankula committed the crime. Was it saying the words in his private home? Was it the filming of the words? Was it the uploading of the video? Yeah. Because there have it been... It wasn't his intention behind the video. Well, because it wasn't that uh, he was trying to reach a wider audience. At the time, he had five subscribers. I mean, this is the number keeps getting lower every time I talk to somebody. It's like first it's ten, then eight. Single digits, definitely single. Single digits. Because it was just his friends and his, his yeah. girlfriend. So um, you can't even say that he intended to offend a wide audience, and that was why he committed the crime. So then I have a legitimate question: When the Mirror, the Independent, the Sun, when they have millions in their audience, yep. they use the same language. They upload his video in its entirety. They're exempt from that. Is that is that what yeah. I'm to infer? Yeah, absolutely. That's what in, they consider to be freedom of the press. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, sure. They, 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 but if, they, but, if but, they were to be caught up on this, they would be caught, they would cry. Freedom of speech, freedom of the press. But as soon as a, a Scottish comedian makes a joke about it, then oh well, I mean that's hate speech. It's it is definitely. A, but a but one. but is there a difference between uploading the clip entirely, which they're profiting from? And taking clips of it and commenting on them for news for for something newsworthy. Yeah, fair use that is. It's well, but 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 it, so look, it's one thing if you know when I make a video, I say X, Y, and Z happened, and here's a clip of that. What they did was they took his whole video and published it on their server with ads. Yeah, it's because the basically the um, it, it's similar to what happened in Canada with Lindsay Shepherd, right? Where you, it's all in the framing, right? So as long as they were disparaging of this clip and this thing, then of course the left leaves them alone. But of course, if you frame it neutrally and you're not disparaging, then and you're saying let's have a discussion about this, then you're going to be flayed. Well, even these news articles weren't disparaging it; they were just simply this is what happened and here's the video. They, they, I think they do um, occupy a kind of special position. Yeah, and and you know honestly, I'm not advocating for them to face repercussions yeah, for, course, for doing yeah, this. But at the same time, I find it rather ridiculous that Dankula himself yeah. is, you know, it's a joke. And if we think and this is just my opinion, so you don't have to listen to me. But I feel like if someone made a joke that's really stupid and you think it's bad, you shouldn't lock them up, find them, spend two years of their, of their lives going to court. You simply say, don't do this again. Here's your warning. I mean, am I? I don't feel like even that one. Yeah. Is, like, well, no, 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 no. I'm saying if it's 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 the equivalent of saying to someone. Let's say someone has uh, they're disabled, they have special needs, and they don't articulate themselves well. You take people with Tourette's. Are you going to imprison people with Tourette's for saying things that they either can't control themselves saying, or that they are not necessarily in their right mind saying? It seems like context and intent really do matter. I'm, I'm such a radical on this. I would rather, I, I would rather the Nazis be able to parade down the fucking street, shouting all of the anti-Semitic, racist slogans they want. They're just words. And this, this is the thing we learned with uh, sort of Nick Griffin going question time. The absolute, yeah, exactly. This is the quintessential. Exactly. This absolutely destroyed the uh, BMP. It was the end of it. And it is because people see them for what they are, and they are genuine well, it's, people. It's like the censorship is just bad all the time. It's not radical, when you say it's, it should be radical at all. Yeah, exactly. That should, be, it's, a, it's, that should be a stand. The, 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 the more you censor someone, exactly. the more that you reinforce in their idea that they are correct in the idea that they are. You make it seem dangerous. You make it seem alluring. But why is this person just being censored? Maybe there's something there, and then you it goes from there, really. And not not just that, but the the point I brought up earlier that if you sanitize the speech of an individual so that people can only see the things they say that aren't controversial, they're going to support them. And they're not going to know the truth about what these people actually believe. That, that's what's scary to me. It was, it was, I was experiencing some kind of like, I couldn't find this, this website, multiple video clips, 
I know it exists, and I feel like I'm in an alternate reality because it wouldn't come up on Google. I saw that clip. I saw the clip you talking about. Yeah, right. I was like, am I, am I wrong? He wants white people to become more like N words, which yeah. I will actually sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's American YouTube. I don't know you, have to. <laughs> you can't say it. It's all this Chinese. Right, right, right. And uh, I believe there. But, but hold on. There was an article uh, a few years ago, and I. Forgive me if I'm if I'm incorrectly remembering this, but I read this not too long ago that said China was praising the world for adopting similar policies to the Great the Great Firewall. Saying really, I would not be surprised if they I'm, did. I'm I'm probably misremembering yes. it, but but I you know anybody listening you know Google it. I'll try and find it, maybe get a better source when I sure. when I upload the video. But something along those lines, they were like the world is recognizing our position. You know, oh, fucking, yeah. that's what we want. The Chinese Communist Party say yes, we were right after all. <laughs> <laughs> We really are the most advanced culture. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess uh, final thoughts. What's what's next? Everyone's going to enjoy a pint and declare victory, or what? Well, hopefully, Danky does appeal uh, in the legal sense. You know, I mean, uh, ultimately, I want I want the court to have to say, yeah, he did nothing wrong. No, 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 he did. Oh, because he didn't. He, he did absolutely nothing Thank wrong. Dankula did nothing wrong. Yeah. yeah. I've already made a video called that, so I can't make another video called that. <laughs> yeah. You know. yeah. Yeah. And in terms of the Liberalists UK and the Liberalists International Association, who are vital to our work here as well, yeah. uh, this is just the first step and we will continue to move forward and really fight for the principles that are laid down at Liberalists.org, um, which include freedom of speech, freedom of expression and individualism, which are all intrinsically tied to everything that's been said here. Do you, I'll, I'll, let me ask one, one question. Well, this was the result of you guys all. You guys got all of this together, you got the banner, you got all of this sorted. You guys organized this. I didn't do it. You know, everyone wants to you know, tell me that I'm the, the organizer. I'm not you're the organizer. You guys do. I am, yes. This is, it's, it's a movement that intends to stay. We want to move forward for change. We want to keep the momentum going. And we really, really want to build ourselves into a political force to be reckoned with. So here's the final semi-irrelevant but relevant to a certain group of people question do you believe in rights for everyone regardless of their race identity <laughs> national origin absolutely it, 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 they're irrelevant silly to question us. yeah but oh but 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 trust me there are people who say the keck flag was here oh. the quotes uh, were racist yeah, right. yeah. 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 Say, we so, do not care what you look like we don't care what you sound like or what you believe but we believe that you should have the right to say it. Yeah. huzzah oh. all right thank you everybody Um, my name's Helen Dale, I'm a columnist for The Spectator and a solicitor, which probably sounds very rude to Americans, uh, but it, I think you would say a trial lawyer or a trial oh, okay. attorney in yeah. America. Um, I used to practice up in Scotland, Scotland has a different legal system from that in England and Wales, but I'm qualified in both. And I became very familiar with the style of Scottish comedy and Scottish humour. Um, and the expression that's used to describe this is Scottish banter. And an important note too, you were one of the speakers at today's event. Yes, yes, uh, and I, I became a speaker at today's event by a somewhat unusual route, and I will try to explain this to Americans in a way that makes sense. I, I write columns for The Spectator, which is traditionally considered the house journal of British conservatism. The British conservatism is very different from Amer American conservatism. It was the conservatives in Britain that legalized same-sex marriage, for example. Um, it's closer to what I think in America would be considered classical liberalism or perhaps libertarianism, but not in the same way that you define it. It's more socially liberal and economically conservative. However, Britain has a class system. And so before today, I had never heard of the gentleman who's currently interviewing me, Tim Pool. I didn't know he existed. I had never heard of Sargon of Akkad. I didn't know he existed. Um, and it's probably quite likely that neither of them had ever heard of The Spectator. I wrote an article on for The Spectator on the Count Dankula case, and it went viral, as in I tweeted the link to it um, in the middle of the night or before I went to bed one evening when it was finally made available. It was made available on The Spectator's website. And I woke up in the morning to what is quarterly described as a bin fire, as in thousands upon thousands of retweets by various people all over the United Kingdom. I, I, I think more people read this article of mine than have any ever read anything that I've ever written ever. And the organisers of the march got in touch with me and said, well, will you speak at it? 
and I went, well, I'm a conservative. Conservatives don't um, do marches. I have right. been on two marches <laughs> in my life. And one of those marches, one of the biggest marches in British history, was the Countryside Alliance March, which was about the fox hunting ban, which is going to sound so extraordinarily niche to an American audience, I'm very sorry. Um, and so it's just not something that we traditionally do. So it was a meeting of two different streams of politics in a way that I had not expected. It was very new. And my speech, this very briefly, was I wanted to ensure that people didn't argue for guilt by association. One of the originally programmed speakers in London, but he finished up going up to Scotland, was a chap called Tommy Robinson. And he is widely disliked in the UK. He's perceived as a racist over here and, and also as a, a, sort of a football lout. He's low, considered low class. That's just going to sound so British, but I, 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 that's all I can really say. And I had to argue well actually no something doesn't stop being true because of pe what people the, the people who believe in it it's either true or it's not and if someone who you don't like believes in the same thing as you that doesn't invalidate the truth of the idea and in this case it's freedom of speech so I wanted to deal with that issue the next issue is I wanted to defend this particular aspect of Scottish culture the, the Scottish banter save Scottish banter because it was something I experienced a lot of when I worked in Scotland and when I practiced in Scotland and it's something for which I have a great deal of admiration. Scottish people are very funny. That's why they produce these remarkable comedians like Frankie Boyle and Billy Connolly and many, many others. Is, is Craig Ferguson Scottish? I think so, yes. Yeah. And he's, he's um, I don't know, I mean he was huge for a long time in the US. Mm. Yeah. But yes, it, it, Scottish people, but a lot of just regular Scottish people are just very funny. I mean, I used to work at the office of the solicitor to the Scottish Parliament, and my work colleagues would just come out with streams of this stuff, and I would not, uh, there would be hours where I didn't get any work done because I was laughing so hard. And you know, it's a wonderful gift that they've got, and, and Count Dankula is in that tradition of Scottish banter. And even Scots law, to a degree, traditionally, has protected the role of Scottish banter, which is what makes this judgment so awful. And then the third thing I wanted to do, which is very niche, and I won't go into any detail here, is just I wanted to argue that for the repeal of this piece of legislation. And the reason it needs to be repealed is because it was originally dra drafted in 1935 and enacted in 1935 to stop harassing telephone calls. Nothing to do with the internet at all. So I have a question that I've asked time and time again, and maybe you might have some insight on. Media companies have published in the, in the entirety this clip of the, of the Nazi pug. So if the judge said the context and intent don't matter, why are the media companies allowed to, and I, I don't mean they mentioned it or showed a clip, I mean they're media companies who just uploaded the entire thing without comment or, or they, here's the video. Ah, uh, right, okay, there is an exemption in section 127 for media companies in the, in the role of broadcasters um, reporting the news. And I can, there is a, it, it's cut and dried, it's in the legislation oh, okay. and in the process of reporting the news. And that is why, for example, I have friends of mine, Comedy Unleashed, which is a London comedy club, who showed the Count Dankula clip in the context of a wider presentation mm. to their audience at the comedy club and they recorded it. And they now can't upload it because they're just comedians who run a club. But if they get a news organisation to upload it, then the news organisation will fall underneath the exemption. What makes someone a news organisation? How long is a piece of string? Exactly, exactly. Yes. exactly. And that's a challenge. I mean, I have uh, my own two-person news, news organisation. We have a website. I have my own press card. Does that mean I'm protected? Probably would be, yes. I think, you know, I think one of the issues too is if you look at the context of my career, no one would argue it's not true. Yes. And if a comedian tried to claim they're now a journalist... Then people would argue that 
that but then, is untrue. But it's yes. an argument because anyone can become a journalist if they so choose. You can say, you know what, I'm no longer a comedian. I now want to work in journalism, right? In which case, I think one of the things that's more dangerous about hate speech laws and, and why I'm so affected by it and so interested is no matter what you do, you're going to negatively impact journalism and, and the right to know, right? Mm -hmm. So, for Count Dankula to be punished for a joke, one of the things I've talked with with Sargon, who's actually just right behind you now, is uh, he mentioned this first. No matter what the law is, no matter, you know, someone will say, oh, but Dankula only got an 800 pound fine. That's actually, I'll just, as someone who's practiced in Scotland, that's quite a steep fine. Um, I have seen at Scottish Sheriff Courts fines are typically for that sort of thing are around the 300 to 400 pound stage and it is my view as someone who's practiced law in Scotland that the only reason he didn't go to jail was because of the publicity around this case. I can't prove that, I could be wrong, I wasn't privy to the hearing, so I take it with all of the caveats but as someone who's actually practiced as a lawyer in Scotland I'm, it is my view that the reason he didn't go to jail was precisely because of the publicity that the case is attracted. So I actually think the, the fine is the worst outcome possible because uh, you know uh, uh, essentially what happens is uh, Sargon mentioned this the other day the law has the precedent has been set you can be charged convicted for jokes like this and now that we've accepted it in the future the, the punishment will become steeper and steeper that the law will be used to its most extreme in uh, eventually right there is also the issue of the waste of resources involved in this. Because it's based in England and Wales, I suppose the Scottish situation is quite complex because of the way the law is supposed to work and I won't go into that. But you've just provided an opportunity for every ne'er-do-well and jobs worth to have a moan about something that they don't like and then go to the police with it. This, you know, um, what, what I find particularly dangerous with this kind of legislation is that who determines what's offensive? It's an argument yes. people talk about all You're the time. Up the state is the arbiter of taste. It's nonsense. Yeah. And then what happens when someone says, I find that joke offensive, and the court says that's not actually offensive? Mm. Now well, the courts have, have to decide what is or is not offensive. Offensive, yes. Well, that, that would be, that would disparage marginalized communities who are told by the state that what they experience is invalid. Right? Well, this, this, kind is the, of the, the danger, this is the danger of this, is that first of all, you get all the jobs worth moments who say, I'm going to have a moan about a joke I, I don't like and I don't think it's funny and so on and so forth. That's one part of it. But then you do eventually finish up with the state being the arbiter of taste and telling us what we should all like. And I, no thanks, I'm, I, I know what I like. And you please go away and I, I, I just keep doing my thing and you can keep doing yours. It's just bad. Would, it's would, absolutely bad. Would you appreciate having a First Amendment well, you, can't, you can't actually do that in Britain because a, a current parliament can't bind a future parliament. This is the convention of... of, of, wow. of Yes, yeah. parliaments can only bind the life of, of the current parliament. They can't bind future parliaments. A parliament can make or unmake any law. Sorry, sorry I'm just doing British law 101. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, well, it's interesting. I, Americans don't know that. Yes. Um, so uh, Britain has an unwritten constitution. But, I mean, Britain had freedom of speech for, for, for a very long time. I mean, and all of this stuff is relatively new. And if Parliament can make or unmake any law, then this can be unmade. And that's why I was saying today the way to fix this problem is simply to repeal it. It's just a bad law. Repeal it. It's a matter for Parliament. Parliament should repeal the law. Do you have any uh, final thoughts on today? Do you feel like it was a success? Uh, um, couple, several well, hundred it, people? And it, it, was a good, it was a start. The thing that was valuable for me was finding people who are kind of interested in the traditions of, of British conservatism, who but you had never read an article in The Spectator before, and I had never heard of you or of Sargon of Akkad, you know, that, that, that kind of thing. So uh, part of having a conversation in Britain involves getting people to talk to each other across class lines and, and generational lines. It's not race here. Britain doesn't have any race problems, so to speak. It's class. And so it Traditionally, there are people like me who write for The Spectator and went to Oxford and, and, and have a sort of particular social background don't necessarily talk to someone like you, um, although you're not British, so you're American, yeah. so you get, a special, you get a special pass as part of the, sort of the, uh, of the, of the special relationship. Um, but someone like Sargon would not be a person who I would necessarily have known about or heard of. Yeah, yeah.
Interesting. Well, so, so, the, the, so that was valuable for me. So the, the, all these people I, d I didn't know even know existed. It's, it seems like what happened with Count Dankula has essentially knocked over several dominoes, which has led to the coming together of different classes, different... Um, it's, it's sort of woken up a free speech wave. We've, we've had the battle for free speech in the U.S. It's been, it's been here, but now you... It's, they've, it's a Streisand effect, I suppose. They've made Dankula famous. They've brought out activists. They've brought about you together. It now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Everybody knows about it now. Well, thank you so much for, for talking and explaining no your position. Thank it's you been very wonderful. much. Yeah. So I guess that about wraps it up. There were a lot of speakers. I didn't get to talk to everybody, but decent conversation, really interesting points being made by all. Thanks for tuning in. I'm actually heading back now to edit this video you're watching. So you can follow me on Twitter at TimCast. Subscribe to my YouTube channel if you have not already. New videos every day at 4 p.m. and periodic live streams like we saw today when the app isn't crashing. So if you want to watch the raw coverage, I have three different live stream videos from various points of the march. And uh, Sargon's speech is in, I believe, the second uh, video, the second live stream video. So I'll, I'll put together a playlist or something. Thanks for, for hanging out and watching, and I guess I'll see you.